Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. A very happy Friday to all of you and a special thank you to my newest Patreon supporter, Mark. I greatly appreciate it. Yes, for today's video, I'll be wearing my earmuffs because I want to share a few clips with you and it's just easier that way. And I have to say, this was one of the hardest videos for me to make. There are so many things on my mind. Tesla AI day was truly revolutionary. My mind was blown and no, it's not just because of the Tesla bot. So hopefully you can stick with me as I just free flow through this and jump around a little bit. There's so much to get to. But the main takeaway here that I want everybody to have is that this is the inflection point for Tesla no longer being referred to as a car company. Making cars is just something that Tesla does, but they are so much more than that. This is why they command higher valuations. And like I said on Twitter, in my opinion, if Wall Street understood what Tesla said last night, specifically about Tesla Dojo, they would have doubled in share price overnight. And yes, I know that sounds crazy as it would take them to over a trillion dollar valuation, but over the next 10 years, as Tesla Dojo starts to play out, which should be operational by next year, this is going to dramatically change things, not just for Tesla, but for neural net training at scale. There are many different applications where this can be used. And it sounds like Tesla Dojo is the factor that will allow Tesla to solve for full self-driving. The thing is, no one else has Tesla Dojo, so that means, based on what Tesla has found, without the solution, they wouldn't be able to solve for full self-driving, meaning Tesla might be the only one to solve it anytime soon. But if you don't believe me, take a listen to Elon. Yeah, the, the order labeling is uh, an extremely impor important part of this whole, whole situation. Um, without the auto labeling, I think we would not be able to solve the self-driving right. problem. Without auto labeling, without Tesla Dojo, we would not be able to solve full self-driving. Tesla is the only one with this solution. So let's start with Tesla Dojo. Now this is the generalized neural net training solution. Basically think auto labeling. Now this is crucial because Tesla spent a lot of time talking about their in-house labeling team, the actual people or humans that are doing this, which the count is over a thousand employees that are on this labeling team. And that is not even close to enough, which is why they had to develop Dojo. Now, to my knowledge, there is no other automaker that has this level of human capital working on labeling to solve for full self-driving. As mentioned, Tesla has about a thousand or more employees working on this labeling, and they said that was not even close to enough, which is why they had to create Dojo. And if you remember what Elon said, without this labeling initiative, they will not be able to solve full self-driving. I cannot stress how important that quote is. It'll be a fastest AI training computer, 4X the performance at the same cost, 1.3X better performance per watt, that is energy saving, and 5X smaller footprint. This will be Dojo Computer. And we are not done. We are assembling our first cabinets pretty soon, and we have a whole next generation plan already. We are thinking about 10X more with different aspects that we can do, all the way from silicon to the system again. We will have this journey again. We're recruiting heavily for all of these areas. Thank you very much. What? So Dojo, which won't be operational until next year, they are already working on the next version and the next iteration, going through this entire ground up process again. This right here encapsulates, in my opinion, the essence of Tesla. They are constantly innovating at breakneck speeds, even while they are already world-class with this dojo in and of itself, they're already on the next one, which is just really hard to grasp, I think, for myself and anybody. And it's this right here that, in my opinion, encapsulates the essence of Tesla. They are continuously innovating at breakneck speeds while they are already world-class at what they do, specifically in this case with Dojo. It is a groundbreaking, revolutionary technology in supercomputing. And just to be clear, this is designed by Tesla, completely custom, once again, from the ground up. No other company is doing this. They're not just pulling parts off the shelf from different chip companies. It's 100% designed specifically by Tesla, completely custom. And one more thing. So if Tesla or any other company that ultimately licenses Dojo from Tesla in the future needs less compute power, AKA not the full headroom that this Dojo can offer, 
This is a modular system, meaning you don't need the entire cabinet and all of that power. You can have specific parts and essentially build different modules based on the compute power that you need for that specific application. This is massive. So what that means is Dojo will be customizable for different compute level requirements for different applications. Simply put, that would make Dojo attractive for many different companies, not just Tesla. This modular system, by the way, is the DPU, a Dojo processing unit in case you hear Tesla refer to that in the future. Now, take a listen to this mind-blowing stat about the scale of what Tesla is doing here. So last but not least, uh, we've been scaling our uh, neural network training compute dramatically over the past few years. And today we're barely shy of 10,000 GPUs, which just to give you some sense, in terms of number of GPU, uh, is more than the top five publicly known supercomputers in the world. More than the top five publicly known supercomputers in the world. Tesla is on the level of the elite world-class supercomputing companies. Now, I'm not sure if he meant more than the top five publicly known supercomputers combined. That wouldn't even make sense. Maybe that's what he meant because that phraseology would lead me there. But even if it's just more than the top five, they would be number one. What this means is that Tesla is ultimately a world-class supercomputing company in addition to AI and everything else that they are doing. Now, I wish somebody would have asked who Tesla plans to have manufacture Tesla Dojo because Tesla, yes, they designed this chip, but the actual manufacture and physically making this chip is going to be done by somebody else. I would love to know who. And I will say some of the questions that were asked last night were great. They were very insightful. So well done to everybody who was there asking questions. So another big takeaway for me was what Tesla is doing with simulation. Many other companies out there have claimed that their simulation data is awesome. They have have so much data, they don't need as much real world data. Well, here comes Tesla saying basically they have the best of both worlds. They have by far the most real world data, which yes, is more important, but they are pairing this with a simulation system where it is also seemingly world-class. It looks like the best video game ever made. I'll show you in a second. But what this means is that Tesla can take real world situations that are complex and then turn it into a simulation and add in more difficult situations that even the real world edge cases can't give you. Once again, part of the reason Tesla needed Tesla Dojo because they have so much data from the real world and the simulation that to actually label all of this and process everything, they need more than even 1,000 humans can process. Um, currently, we're, we're doing things similar to photorealism enhancement. Uh, there's a paper, a recent paper, photo, enhancing photorealism enhancement. Um, but we can do a lot more than the, what they could do in that paper because we have way more labeled data, way more compute, um, and also much we have a lot more control over our environments. Um, and we also have a lot of people who can help us make this run at real time. Um, but we're gonna try whatever we can do to get to the point where we can train everything just with the simulator uh, if we had to, but we will never have to because we have so much real world data that no one else has. Um, it's just to fill in the little gaps in the real world. Yeah, I mean, as we, the simulator is, is, is very helpful when there's like the, these rare cases like, like um, you know, like collision avoidance right before an accident. Um, and then, the, ironically, the, the better our cars become at avoiding accidents, the fewer accidents there are, so then our training set is small, so then we have to make them crash in the simulation. <laughs> so it's like, okay, mi minimize potential injury to uh, pedestrians and, and people in the car. You, uh, you have five meters, you're traveling at, uh, you know, 20 meters per second. Um, what actions would minimize prob probability of injury. And we can run that in sim. <laughs> so. Elon said you can run that in sim. Basically, you can simulate crashes in the simulation when obviously you don't want to simulate crashes in the real world. So here is an example, probably tough to tell of Tesla simulation, but it's almost indistinguishable from real world. It looks so incredibly real. So Tesla is doing a lot of work here in the simulation. I did not know they were doing this much with simulation in addition to the real world data. I wanna share this clip about Elon responding to a question about Hardware 4 because he does mention something that might give us some insight into the Cybertruck production schedule. Well, I'm, I'm confident that uh, Hardware 3 or the full self driving computer one uh, will be able to uh, achieve full self-driving at a safety level much greater than a human, probably, I don't know, at least two or 300% better than a human. Um, 
then obviously there will be a future hardware for a full self-driving computer too, um, which we'll probably introduce with the Cybertruck. Um, so maybe in about a year or so. Uh, that is probably, well, that'll be about four times more capable, roughly. Um, but it, it, it's really just going to be like, can we take it from, say, for argument's sake, 300% safer than a person to 1,000% safer? Um, you know, just like there are people on the road who, with, with varying driving abilities, um, but we still let people drive. It, you don't have to be the world's best driver to be on the road. So Hardware 4 may be coming next year with Cybertruck, maybe next year. So it looks like the production could be one year from now, not the beginning of 2022. But Hardware 3 is going to be enough to solve for full self-driving to be about 300% better than the average human. And Hardware 4 might push that to over 1,000% or about four times better than Hardware 3. I got to show you this clip where Elon made a joke and he kind of like chuckles to himself and then looks around to see if anybody else is laughing. He just cracks me up. He made me laugh so many times last night. Uh, because as you point out, uh, he, uh, getting heat out is uh, extremely important. It's probably just really heat limited. So, um, yeah, so it's funny that the, at, at the compute level, it's operating at less than a volt, <laughs> which is uh, yeah. a, a very low voltage. There's a lot of amps, so therefore a lot of heat. I squared R is a really bites you on the ass. Um, hi. I don't know why. He just makes me laugh. I love it. And for your today, I learned I squared R is copper loss, the term often given to heat produced by electrical currents in the conductors of transformer windings or other electrical devices. Copper losses are an undesirable transfer of energy. And one more important note on the size and the power in terms of what the rest of the world is doing when it comes to Tesla Dojo. By now, you must have realized our modularity story is pretty strong. We just put together some tiles. We just tile together tiles. <laughs> a two by three tile in a tray makes our training matrix, and two trays in a cabinet give 100 petaflops of compute. So just right here, 100 petaflops of compute. Now, if we go to the top 500, basically they do this ranking annually of the best supercomputers on the planet. Please forgive me if this isn't like a good direct comparison. I am by far not an expert in this, kind of out of my depth. But as you can see, the number one supercomputer ranked at most recently from Fugaku, we're talking between 442 and 537 petaflops. This is the number one. So at this stage, this part of what Tesla has done, that's 100 petaflops per cabinet, which would put Tesla somewhere right here between two and four. But he continues. Did we stop here? No. <laughs> we just integrated seamlessly. We broke the cabinet walls. We integrated these tiles seamlessly all the way through, preserving the bandwidth. There's no bandwidth divot out here. There's no bandwidth cliffs. All the tiles are seamlessly connected with the same bandwidth. And with this, we have an exapod. This is one exaflop of compute in 10 cabinets. It's more than a million training nodes that you saw. We paid meticulous attention to that training node, and there are one million nodes out here. Okay, so I don't know if you're grasping this, but in the presentation, they showed the meticulous level of attention and detail they put into the first stage of Dojo. And then as they scaled up, he just said there's basically a million of their scaled versions in this system, essentially. And yes, an exaflop is 1,000 petaflops. So with Tesla's exaflop, as we can see, that would put them in first place, almost 2xing the Fugaku, strictly in terms of petaflop performance. Once again, I hope this is a decent comparison. Please let me know in the comments if you're more of an expert in this field. And this next quick line from Elon basically sums up that Tesla is holding the golden goose with this new technology when it comes to neural net training. Um, you know, CPUs and GPUs, uh, they're, they're, they're not made to be, um, they're, not, they're not designed specifically for training neural nets. Um, it, we've been able to make GPUs especially very efficient for for training neural nets, but that's not, that was never their design intent. So it's, it's basically, GPUs are still essentially running at uh, neural, neural net training in emulation mode. So um, with, with Dojo, we're saying like, okay, let's just, let's just ASIC the whole thing. 
let's just ace, have this thing that's it's built for one purpose, and that is neural net training. And, and just and generally, any system that is designed for a specific uh, purpose will be better than one that is designed for a general purpose. Competitive advantage, Tesla, check. And Elon was asked how he feels about open sourcing what Tesla is doing. It's a very important answer. Thoughtful. Um, well, I mean, it is fundamentally extremely expensive to create uh, the system, so uh, somehow that has to be paid for. I'm not sure how to pay for it if it's fully open sourced. Um, yeah, unless people want to work for free. <laughs> but But I should say that uh, this is, if other car companies want to license it and use it in their cars, that would be cool. This is not intended to be just limited to Tesla cars. There you have it. Will any other automaker take up Tesla on this offer when the scaling and production comes? My guess is probably not because it's a pride thing and these other companies would rather die than reach out to Tesla for help to have the best technology available. But I guess only time will tell. So look, as you can see, there is so much to get to and I'll probably keep coming back to and referencing this presentation in future episodes. And I didn't even mention the Tesla bot because look, everybody and their brother are going to cover that and talk about it. There's already hundreds of YouTube videos out there. So feel free to go watch one of those. My personal take is yes, it's incredibly exciting. Yes, it's awesome. Yes, it's just one more piece of evidence for Wall Street to see, hey, Tesla isn't just a car company. They are doing so much more than that. But at the same time, there's just a lot for Tesla to prove. So are we actually gonna see a prototype next year or will it be pushed back to 2024? Because if you forget, their product pipeline is already pretty full. So I'm not overly optimistic that we're gonna see a robot prototype by next year. But even if there is, you know, how useful is it going to be? How much is it going to cost? There's just a lot of unknowns. So you can't blame Wall Street for not giving Tesla a max valuation just because they announced this bot. Optimus subprime, if you will. But of course, it's another storyline to follow for Tesla. It's something else to get excited about. And yes, I think eventually this will be a very big TAM or total addressable market. I'm just not going to be overly optimistic about it having any influence on the stock price in the next 12 months personally. But like I said, what should be driving up the stock price if people understood is Tesla Dojo. What they just created here and what they're already working on creating next is so mind blowing, world class and revolutionary Missionary in a space, by the way, that is one of the most complex industries on the planet, I say it all the time, the semiconductor space, which right now is having all kinds of problems. So we have to wonder, like I said, who's gonna build this for Tesla? How many will they be able to produce? And all of that, hopefully we can get some answers on one of the conference calls, but I'm gonna try to wrap it up for today. Please take a second to like this video if you did. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Don't worry, there will be more to come on Tesla AI Day as mentioned in future episodes. And a major thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.